I just stumbled over the beautiful uh, Poetry Slam OCD from Neil Hilborn. I've seen it before but I re-watched it and the ending really gave me goosebumps. If you haven't watched it yet, there's a link in the description, go and watch it because I will analyze the bumps out of it. Why does it give me goosebumps and why was it a viral hit? The answer is simple, storytelling. In fact, the poem follows a very basic storytelling scheme uh, for tragedies, which you can also find in a lot of movies like Braveheart or um, Anakin Skywalker story. And this basic scheme was defined by Christopher Bookers in his book, The Seven Basic Plots. So let's take a look. In this basic scheme, the protagonist has to go through five stages of the tragedy. Stage one, the anticipation stage. In this stage, the protagonist realizes that something is missing in his life. For example, fame, love or power. The first time I saw her, everything in my head went quiet. All the ticks, all the constantly refreshing images just disappeared. Also, the very beginning of the disaster is initiated. I knew I had to talk to her. I asked her about six times. In 30 seconds, she said yes after the third one, but none of them felt right, so I had to keep going. On our first date, I spent more time organizing my meal by color than I did eating, fucking talking to her. Clearly, the disaster in the poem is the OCD, and also he falls in love, and the love makes him forget about his OCD, so that's what he's missing in life. Second stage, the dream stage. In this stage, everything for our protagonist goes very well. It goes too well. But she loved it. She loved that I had to kiss her goodbye 16 times or 24 times if it was Wednesday. She said she loved me, her mouth would curl up at the edges. Also, the protagonist comes in a situation where there's no turning back. When we moved in together, she said she felt safe, like no one would ever rob us because I definitely locked the door 18 times. So there's no turning back from this situation. He's now living with this girl together. Stage three, the frustration stage. In this stage, the protagonist encounters the first small problems and it also gives us, the audience, a sense that um, this situation can't end very well. Some mornings, I start kissing her goodbye, but she just leave because I was making her late for work. When I stopped at a crack in the sidewalk, she just kept walking. When she said she loved me, her mouth was a straight line. Stage 4. The Nightmare Stage. Here, our protagonist gets a sense that there's an opposing fate or force closing in that he can't escape. Further, he gets paranoid and lives in fear of what comes in the future. Usually, when I obsess over things, I see germs sneaking into my skin. I see myself crushed by an endless succession of cards and she was the first beautiful thing I ever got stuck on. Stage number five, the last stage, destruction or death wish stage. In this stage, the protagonist takes his last breaths before he dies in a way. But also the protagonist experiences a rebirth. Now, I just think about who else is kissing her. I can't breathe because he only kisses her once. He doesn't care if it's perfect. I want her back so bad. I leave the door unlocked. I leave the lights on. So in our poem, a part of him died with the leaving of the girl. He is now alone and he leaves the door unlocked and leaves the light on even if it kills him inside, but he still has hope that she comes back. And we kind of know that that won't happen, which makes it very tragic. But also, in my opinion, the rebirth here is that he manages to overcome a part of his OCD, which maybe is for him a next step in a bigger world. Okay, I admit there are better examples for the rebirth uh, than in this poem. For example, in Braveheart. When William Wallace gets executed at the end, he is dead, but William Wallace experiences his rebirth through the army of Scottish men who now fight like warrior poets. Beautiful. So that is the basic tragedy scheme, but you can even make it more simpler and put the protagonist and the story in a simple shape, which shows how well are things going for the protagonist. In this case, he starts under the normal level because he has OCD, which is really a problem for him. 
But then he falls in love and she accepts him and they even move in together. So the curve goes up and up and up until they both realize that they can't live together with his OCD. So she moves out and now, in my opinion, his condition now goes even more down than it was in the beginning because he experienced the love and he lost it. There's something I really love about tragedies and that is the victory in the defeat or death of the protagonist. In our poem, it is exactly this moment. I want her back so bad. I leave the door unlocked. I leave the lights on. Did you hear the audience sigh at the end? That is exactly what I'm talking about. Even if he's dead because his big love left him, he's winning a fight against his OCD. He's not winning the war, but he's winning clearly a fight with leaving the light on and the door unlocked. And this fight against himself, this big sacrifice, that makes the audience sigh. You only have such great and impactful endings in tragedies, in my opinion. Another great example that pops in my mind is the perfume. At the end of the movie, Grenouille uses his own perfume, which makes him smell so good that the people around him start to eat him in a kind of ecstasy. There are so great images, uh, nah, not exactly great, but they have really a kind of beauty, which I totally love. And that's the reason why I got goosebumps and why the audience sighed at the end. It's just a perfect example for a tragedy. But now besides all the analysis stuff, Neil Hilburn is a very great actor. It's such a genius idea to use the OCD behavior to give us a sense of this annoying and burdensome illness. And further besides that, he chooses a topic we all can relate to. Our first big love or love in general. Whew, that was a fun expedition in the big wide world of storytelling. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, if you have any ideas or wishes for uh, more storytelling analysis, uh, especially movies, leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe and um, leave a like. Yeah, that's all you can do. And with that, as always, cheerio.